Hello everybody, it's a Centralized Dave and I have prepared for you a presentation consisting of 30 slides. Uh, I'm going to go through uh, much of the data, uh, various sorts of data, and uh, it will be bullish arguments and also bearish arguments. Uh, I've decided to proceed to do this presentation because over the past days or even a week, I've seen uh, some uh, concerning, I have reasons for concerns. Um, it's mainly connected to the uh, meme coin season or meme coin craze, meme coin sentiment. Uh, I have uh, actually uh, put that argument at the very end of this presentation, which means it's going to be at the very end of the part two. And uh, this is very important to, um, to be able to um, zoom out and uh, to uh, put, to lay aside uh, bearish arguments, bullish arguments, and thus to challenge your bullish side and bearish side, it improves your decision making. Uh, it improves your awareness of where the current crypto game is. And also it, it improves my chances to do the correct, to, to do the right move in a crypto right now. So I would like to start with a bullish arguments and with a more macro oriented bullish arguments. I actually would like to start talking about equities. The equities, as most of you might be already aware, are very important when it comes to crypto. Even though I, I do only crypto. So um, uh, if you want more extensive breakdown on the other markets, equity markets, commodity markets, Forex, I think as well. You should check Sonny Mulder and his recent breakdown. He made three videos, 30 minutes long each, where he also featured tens of presentation slides where he goes through uh, tons of arguments uh, related to these markets. But uh, I still have to analyze, even though I don't do equities, I still have to analyze equities to some degree because as uh, most of you might be already aware, if we want to have, if the crypto wants to have the crypto bubble and end of the cycle, it pretty much needs equities to create bullish environment. It needs equities to be breaking the all time highs, which was happening in Q1 this year. Uh, and that's why it created the environment also for the Bitcoin to broke the all time high, which happened this March. And uh, thus, uh, once the Bitcoin breaks all time high, it's pretty much always been the case that we saw the uh, uh, the end of the crypto cycle uh, within a year. So where do uh, equities stand in June? So this is the most uh, the most recent uh, uh, S and P five hundred chart where you can see that the uh, S and P five hundred broke the all time highs again in May. Uh, after a very brief and uh, after about 6% correction. Uh, this is the inflation uh, inflation chart updated. Um, uh, there you also can see that the inflation has fallen a lot last year from 7% to below 3% where it's still standing. And also the last, con last report also confirmed it. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, you see the unemployment rate, which is also very important data uh, uh, when you want to analyze the macro environment. Uh, this is the US unemployment rate uh, because uh, the crypto has been uh, so far, the most US economy has been, is still is the strongest economy in the world. And uh, presumably also most of the trading happens in the US for crypto. And the crypto has been tremendously correlated with the S&P 500, with the basically US equities. So the unemployment rate is low. That's why I feature it as bullish. Although they, there also is a reason to concern. If you look at this chart, this is the last 50 years of unemployment history in the US. Um, when you look at this chart, you realize that every single time there is a recession mark in these gray areas and every single time when we had a recession and then the unemployment fell rapidly, which was the case in 2020, the unemployment fell rapidly and then it flattened and it started slowly rising every single time 
in the history of the past 50 years, we had another recession. Uh, this is a very macro chart. So uh, it's measured in years. So it took still years. Uh, it was actually, it started rising slowly for about year two, three, and then came the recession. And we are in the environment where the unemployment is rising slowly. So there is also a, a huge reason for concern. And it's also, even though the bullish point is that the unemployment is low, but the bearish point is that there is indeed a recession on the horizon and the unemployment rate confirms it. Have a look at the, let's have a look at the housing, another very important uh, macro uh, data um, that you need to be looking at because obviously uh, uh, you need, in order to uh, for the equities to be strong, you need the housing market to not to crash. And um, I have uh, uh, I have marked for you in these circles uh, over the past twenty years the instances where we where the housing was sideways because the housing is sideways for about two years, one point half year or so. And I have marked for you these instances. And as you can see, we had two instances where after the sideways, there was actually a surge in the price. But we also had one instance just before the 2008 recession when we were sideways like we are at the moment. And after that, we had recession where the housing market went down or actually crashed, right, in 2008. So also uh, um, connected to the previous figure about the unemployment, uh, I also uh, would like to uh, point out a caution. Uh, even though the housing market is strong, hasn't crashed, uh, it's near the all-time highs, um, there is also a reason of for concern. And also another important metric is the money supply. Um, obviously, when we had the COVID situation and there was about 30% of the money uh, money circulation, uh, the, the, there was money, there was uh, uh, the historically largest uh, or the most aggressive money printing, but about 30% of the money uh, in a circulation were printed, uh, were printed and, and put into the circulation that had, of course, dramatic in, uh, impact on the asset prices because obviously um, the asset prices then rise because there is more money, the more purchasing power in the circulation, right? At the very least, but it has uh, also lots of others, lots of other impacts on our lives. And I would like to show you that the currently at uh, the M2 money supply actually started increasing. Uh, it started re increasing about a uh, half year ago or so. Uh, I don't have the date sampled here, but uh, this is very recent. This is uh, approximately half year, uh, the, the, the past half year, because uh, after the such aggressive uh, money, um, uh, money printing, then we had also a period of about one or one point half years where they were trying to take the money out of the circulation. Uh, to actually uh, decrease the initiative impact of the uh, uh, increasing the money supply. But the, the biggest uh, takeout from this chart right now is that the money supply is again increasing, although in a steady uh, in a steady pace. So that is bullish as well. So now I am progressing into the crypto, to the crypto bullish arguments. And again, I'm starting with a more a macro oriented uh, 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 arguments. So this is the MVRV. Uh, it was one of the um, one of the uh, uh, data that were signaling the top in the last cycle. Uh, they were signaling the top in the spring, actually in April 2021. The last cycle, uh, I don't want to now um, uh, lose myself in my chain of thoughts, so I don't want to go extensively into analyzing the last cycle right now. But uh, a long story short, pretty much nobody saw the top in the November. And also uh, pretty much almost no data were showing the cycle top in November. But there were lots of data that were showing the top in April 2021. 
And there are very few, but there are exceptionally few people that did sell in April 2021 or May 2021 and just didn't come back, just managed to be strong enough emotionally to ignore all the craze that happened then in uh, in October uh, and November, which is basically which was basically a taproot pump and dump. And also the El Salvador uh, situation also helped. So basically the hedge funds, the whales that manipulate the market, crypto is completely manipulated. The prices are completely manipulated. Hands in, a, in the whales that can do what they wish. Although they also need the outside narratives. They need some positive news if they want to pump the price to the skies. And they, want, they need some negative news if they want to really dump the price. But MVRV was one of the data that was showing very accurately and, and adamant uh, that the top was in the spring. And actually, uh, as you can see, <clears throat> it even showed the uh, showed the top prematurely because it showed it at in February 20 to February 2021 when the price was about 56k or something. So it didn't even show actually the the April, but. Uh, um uh, at the moment since we're talking about the current situation um uh since the last cycle in the uh 20th of february 2021 mvrv was 3.9 and also by extrapolating this the the curve is flattening i expect this cycle to be approximately 3.6 might be 3.5 but so far this is here this is the chart uh, of the current of the current MVRV reading, and uh, on 13th of March, where, where Bitcoin broke the all-time high, MVRV was 2.76. So that is actually pretty bullish because it still has a pretty significant way to go, and it fell. It now fell. So even though Bitcoin is back to almost 70,000, uh, the MVRV is really lower. So this is actually a very bullish uh, a metric at the moment. So I will be featuring lots of uh, data uh, 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 from the samples or from the charts featured by CryptoCon. Uh, of course, all of this data, all of this chart that I use right now that I'm showing you, all of this is from his free, um, uh, free content. CryptoCon also does a premium content from premium subscribers. Uh, feel feel free to check him out and also to check his uh, premium. Uh, programs, uh, but he also does lots of very quality um, free content, and I also find lots of the charts that he features also very useful. So here we go. Uh, this is one of them. This is where he put into perspective the um, price performance since halving. So uh, the halving event. Um, I know many people don't find it very useful to be looking at it because uh, the halving impact is presumably not as uh, large as it used to be. Even though the rewards uh, are cut in half, the hash rate can be then adjusted because then if the miners are not profitable, some drop out or many drop out uh, or the, the hash rate can be adjusted. So basically the halving uh, is presumed not to have such an impact as it once used to. But it's still, I think it's very useful to put all the all the, the price performance of Bitcoin into perspective since each halving. As you can see there in different colors, green is from third halving, blue is from second halving, the red is from first halving. And uh, the orange is the very first from Genesis. That was uh, when the uh, Bitcoin was very young and the first uh, first cycle it was uh, very experimental, very volatile, but still. But if you put all into perspective and he also even drew uh, circles in the cycle tops. And if you put them into perspective, you realize that we had pretty much every single time we had the cycle tops in the second year after the halving. And this would actually suggest that the, the next year, not this year, but the next year uh, should be the uh, uh, Bitcoin big year or the crypto big year. Uh, if the Bitcoin still remains the king, 
uh, but at this point, um, uh, a, creep, a Bitcoin is still a clear winner and clear king of the cryptocurrencies that dictates uh, if everything else goes up or down. And also there are some altcoins that have been able to keep up with Bitcoin uh, over the years. But uh, even those, the best performing uh, altcoins comparing to Bitcoin, even those are actually oscillators. So uh, even they don't make new all-time highs over the years versus Bitcoin. Uh, even though the best at the moment seems to be Doge, but after the explosive last cycle, I don't expect Doge to make new all-time high versus Bitcoin, actually. Anyway, the price performing since halving uh, is, at the moment, looks very, very bullish and spells actually good news for us at the moment. This is Bitcoin monthly RSI. So um, RSI is the indicator that shows you basically how overbought or under or oversold we are, and this is on monthly, monthly candles. This is very macro. And uh, when you look here, um, we are in the overbought territory. So this is actually, uh, even though I'm featuring it as bullish, this is also bearish in the, uh, in the, uh, um, uh, uh, from the from the perspective that we are already in the monthly monthly overbought territory, although we've recently corrected and since um, April was a red month, as you can see, we also went down back from the overbought territory. However, I'm featuring it in the bullish arguments because of the fact that once the Bitcoin broke the all-time high, which is uh, uh, highlighted this is again from CryptoCon. In these blue circles, you can see that uh, uh, Bitcoin actually pushed uh, way higher every single time in this uh, in this uh, uh, RSI monthly RSI indicator, which um, is uh, uh, also logical because once Bitcoin uh, breaks all-time high and we are having uh, like the last phase of the crypto cycle, there have always been also lots of uh, newcomers. Also then the retail at some stage always came in and pushed the price uh, or, or offered uh, exit liquidity for the, for the whales, but pushed the prices still higher and created more buy pressure. And here CryptoCon actually speculates that there are always uh, two tops uh, in the last phase of the crypto cycle. And he also projects that where the, crypt the, where the tops could be, uh, because as you can see in every single cycle during the last phase of the cycle, we pushed way higher into the overbought territory, actually way higher than we are at the moment. Um, I would like to also add, however, that where I disagree with CryptoCon is that there are no really two tops, but there is always only a one top, except for the uh, uh, 2013 cycle. Because in 2013 cycle, once we broke the all-time high, then we've made it a, a first top, and also it was clear, it was clearly seen in this RSI as a very high reading the highest reading actually. And then we came back all the way from the overbought territory. And then we came back again at the end of the same year for the final top of that cycle. That was $1,000. So it was when Bitcoin first broke $1,000. So only in this cycle, I see the RSI of two tops. Uh, in the next cycle, it stayed in the overbought territory, even though there was a little correction, but it still stayed in the maximal, let's say maximal monthly RSI overbought territory. And it stayed there and, and it even made a little bit higher high in the total top of December 2017 when Bitcoin came to $20,000. The last cycle uh, that was also where, what caught everybody off guard. Uh, and again, this is one of these indicators that is showing that the April 2021 was the cycle top, not November 2021. 
Uh, and that is clearly showing it that, yes, it came back then uh, from the overbought territory, but then it very barely visited the overbought territory, very barely visited it. Um, so, yes, this, again, this reading could be presented as bearish because we are in the overbought territory, but also it could be presented as a bullish because we are we would yet to see a crypto cycle where we don't hit way higher overbought territory at the end of the cycle, way higher, uh, at least once. So at least once. This is the indicator that is called SMI, ergodic indicator. And I will, uh, the, I would like to first uh, tell you how this indicator is structured. So as SMI uses double moving averages of price minus previous price over two time frames. And this indicator is actually designed to trigger buy and sell trade signals. Uh, this is again chart from a crypto.com who put this indicator into the Bitcoin monthly candles. Okay. And uh, uh, this way, Actually, this indicator was fairly consistent with showing the uh, um, cycle tops and even cycle bottoms when we had when we hit this green line here. Um, and also, uh, this um, also this this indicator uh, shows um, uh, here in this purple line. A relative position, as crypto a crypto con called it, it also shows the moment of breaking the previous all-time highs, and this indicator was also uh, pretty good at timing. Like once we crossed this purple line, um, it was pretty good at timing the uh, when would the approximately when. Of course, the timing can change because as as more people. Like all of this data, including this one, and especially including the timing, all of these data are and will be as accurate as many people will expect them to be, or the, the, lesser, the less people will expect them to be. So if too many people will be looking at this and expecting this timing and expecting this indicator and this data set to come true, the less likely it is actually to come true. So also that's why you need to be very selective and you need to be thinking all the time, all the time, uh, what is at the moment uh, the market expecting? Uh, which data is the market looking at? And then you basically uh, uh, shoot bet against even that data set. That is the more advanced crypto play, uh, crypto game. Uh, however, let's come back to the SMI uh, indicator. So again, every cycle, this red, uh, this red top zone was hit. And even though every cycle, the, the top is lower, but it's again, fairly consistent that uh, also this cycle uh, should be hit uh, for uh, the, the red zone should be hit. Uh, and again, as far as the timing goes, if you extrapolate like from the time when we crossed this purple line, uh, it, it takes about less than 12 months. Uh, I put there my own estimate 10 to 11 months from March 2024. So that would be where this data set is pointing uh, the end of this cycle. Uh, which would be actually the Q1 uh, of the next year. So this is my Fibonacci extension of the total crypto market cap. Okay, so um, this is the last cycle I just took from the uh, total one on trading view, uh, the total current, the total crypto market cap. I did a Fibonacci extension from the very top of the candle to the very bottom of the candle, even the wicks. I accounted for the wicks as well. There are more ways how to do Fibonacci and you need more experience. You need basically even years of experience if you want to be good at these things. So uh, that's why like uh, um, every single month you're in crypto and you're 
um, and working with these uh, indicators every single month counts um, because you're getting more experience. But the main takeaway from this uh, from this data is that have a look at this, like like think about this. Uh, when you did Fibonacci extension of the last uh, crypto market cap uh, from the top to the bottom, and to the, to the very top of the Fibonacci extension, uh, the very top was showing 2.92 trillion. And the very top of the previous cycle was 3 trillion. So this came to basically 1% or, or, or like that, only few percent actually, okay? Few percent of the total crypto market peak the last cycle. So I think it's definitely worth to do the Fibonacci extension. You can say this is a coincidence, but uh, uh, I don't see coincidence. I see maybe providence. <laughs> but however, it's definitely worth to um, to check the Fibonacci extension of the current cycle as when it comes to the crypto market cap. So I have done it again, of course. And uh, the same way as before. And this is the extensions that uh, that are um, that are projected. The very top of the Fibonacci. So if this should play out exactly like the last cycle, the very should the very top should be over 10 trillion, just over 10 trillion. That is, of course, completely insane from the current uh, from the current um, uh, uh, valuations, we are at 2.5 trillion at the moment, uh, and we are already greedy. But I'm gonna get into the bearish arguments uh, later, and also we are showing over overbought on the RSI, etc. As I was showing you just now in the previous indicators, so 10 trillion seems like a very long shot. But also, I would like to also I would like to I would like to to think about uh, like like after the last cycle where nobody sold at the top in November. Basically, nobody sold. Everybody held. And many people held even the whole bearish year because many people were still stuck in the thinking like, yeah, the institutions are going to save us. Yeah, the big buys are coming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So after the last cycle, like, don't just think that this cycle, like people or, or many market participants might do the opposite mistake. Uh, don't you think that the, this cycle people are going to sell too early? So I would like to I would like you to, to think about this, and also I would like to I would like you to, to think because crypto is like a chess game. You need to be thinking about what your opponent, uh, what his what his moves are going to be, and 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 if you if you want to be really a grandmaster or if you want to be a master in a crypto, you also need to be thinking. Like what your opponent is expecting you to do. And then based on that, what the opponent is going to do, et cetera. But uh, don't you think that the whales now uh, will be catching people the opposite way that actually uh, will make them to sell too soon? And because they know that then people are going to come back later on higher prices and then offer them the, the exit liquidity that the whales want. But okay, uh, we need to uh, we need to progress. We have still a few more slides to cover. So don't want to get stuck at Fibonacci, but the top of the extension is over 10 trillion. Uh, however, if you go into the lower extensions, that might be uh, more realistic uh, or or might seem more realistic. Then let's say the first extension is 4.4 trillion, second is 6.73 trillion, and the, the third extension is 9 trillion. And now more Fibonacci. This is from CryptoCon because he's done something that I really, really like. And I thought this really resonates a lot. And this is a very strong bullish argument, if you ask me as well. Because what he's done, uh, he put all the cycles of Bitcoin on the logarithmic scale. Okay, this is logarithmic. This is obviously, okay. Uh, and he 
made a Fibonacci extension, but he didn't account for the top of the wick of the bow of the of the peaks. He accounted for the candle close, and then he took he started the Fibonacci at the wicks at the bottom. It seems weird because when you don't account the wicks uh, on the tops, you also shouldn't account them at the bottoms. But okay, this is the way he's done it. And he actually, in the first cycles, he got that the Bitcoin always hit the second extension, 2.618. And uh, in the cycle two in 2017, uh, in the in the in the cycle two, which is actually cycle three, but uh, uh, in this in this chart, it's it's actually labeled as cycle two. So, um, he he actually the second Fibonacci extension was hit to an absolute precision, few percent off maybe only uh, because the second Fibonacci extensions showed uh, 19,206 and the actual cycle top was 19,800. So this is a very strong correlation and very strong hits. And yet again, do you think it's coincidence, right? Like, um, um, <laughs> however, in the previous cycle, uh, a cycle three labeled on this chart. Uh, the Fibonacci was hit uh, to a very uh, reasonable precision. Uh, it was the first extension that was hit, and we even actually crossed it a little bit. So the 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 first Fibonacci extension was fifty eight thousand, and the actual top was sixty nine thousand. And by the way, sixty nine thousand reminds me a, a meme number just on the sideline, just on the side note. Yeah, just the next time people will be saying that uh, uh, everything is is meme, but not Bitcoin, uh, just, just on the very side note. Anyway, um, so uh, the first extension was hit. So now where does the first extension, because the first two cycles on this chart, as you can see, the second extension was hit. So what about if in this cycle, it's going to be the first extension uh, that's going to be hit twice in a row. And the first extension sits at 159,000 Bitcoin. This is also, in my opinion, a extremely bullish um, uh, argument and also a very strong one because it's basically put it's putting into perspective all the price action since 2011 since the very start. And it's actually taking all the data into consideration together. And this clearly points on 160,000 top. And I'm uh, uh, coming close to the end of this presentation, part one. And I would like to uh, start talking about more, um, more present, more short time frame bullish arguments. So, this is the Bitcoin chart as it stands at the very moment, okay? Uh, and this is here, this is the uh, May correction that we had a, a month ago. Um, so Bitcoin corrected 23.5%, which is uh, for this cycle, which is more than the other corrections were. This is January correction, this is the April, excuse me, this is the August 2023 correction. So Bitcoin corrected slightly more this time. It's going 2.5 months sideways. And it held 20 EMA. And it actually only touched it. It didn't even really wick below it. It just touched it with a wick and immediately bounced back. So if you were looking at these moving averages for a while like me, like you immediately, when you see this, you immediately like, oh, holy, like this is so bullish. Like if it doesn't come back and it doesn't break that, uh, this is like just touch and come back from that immediately. This is very bullish and I'm going to demonstrate it on the, on the next slides. This is the examples of, of when Bitcoin uh, did this, okay, in the history. 
I even uh, labeled them not to be confused. So number one, num uh, the the number one chart is from March 2023 because we had a basically retest of the bottom here. We retested 20,000. And this was the uh, 20, uh, 20 moving average. Pink line is the 20 moving average SMA. And the uh, yellow line is 20 uh, moving average weekly, 20 weekly moving average EMA. Here it hit the SMA and it just hit it like it did right now. Hit it and bounce very strong. It this happened last year. Then we had a, a strong, we had 30,000 uh, spring uh, and actually also the summer. So it bounced higher than it was before and it bounced very strong and fast. This is the second example. This is September 2021, just after the El Salvador uh, uh, legal tender, Bitcoin legal tender happened. Then the Wells uh, suppressed the price, uh, crashed it to, to some extent and yet again, Look at this beautiful walk of the pink line. This is the uh, EMA. Look at this beautiful walk of this pink line here. Just look at that. And after that, we had the taproot going for it. They The wells then used that uh, as the uh, pump and dump uh, uh, narrative. But it bounced very strong. Very strong into the new all-time highs, actually. In one single move. In one month. This is the third example of September 2020. Yeah, I remember this one very well as well uh, from personal experience. We've just had the DeFi summer right here and we've corrected back to 10,000 Bitcoin. And look at these touches. Look how one, two, three, four, five, six. This was like walk on the line, like, and it was on the both lines. It was both SMA and EMA. They, it walked the line and then even it touched and this one it, it touched actually just the EMA like right now and what happened after that this is October November 2020 and you know what followed there the chart uh, I don't have enough screen to show the chart as it followed then but you know what happened right new all-time highs and the new crypto cycle bubble happened then the Bitcoin actually searched all the way to 40,000 or so so this is three examples from not that far history, uh, what showing you unilaterally that once Bitcoin does uh, attaches or walking the line of this of this uh, of these moving averages, then the bounces are very strong, uh, very fast, and it actually tends to go uh, higher than it was before, or even at the new all-time highs. And this might be the last uh, slide of this uh, of this part one of my presentation. And here I have the same touches, but this is now for the total two uh, crypto market cap and total three. Total three is all cryptos except Bitcoin and Ethereum. And total two is all cryptos except for Bitcoin. So, oh my gosh, like this is really bullish, guys. Like this is kind of short term uh, indicators showing the coming month to maybe like summer or so part of the summer. But like when you see chart like this and it bounced from there and when you see chart like this and when you're looking at this moving averages for a long time, then you just know like, wow, like this really makes me excited. This really makes me excited. And it's very good to put things into arguments into perspective that make you really excited and also make and also uh, put next to them also concerning uh, concerning arguments concerning stuff that is going on at the moment and trust me there is also concerning stuff but i'm going to go to it in at the end of my part 2 on the set, on the presentation part 2 but the main takeaway uh, from this slide is that the total two and total three, which is altcoins, look insanely bullish. Insanely bullish. Wow. And they uh, clearly point out that the fully fledged alt season 
uh, is on the horizon. And I started talking about the alt season, and that is the best time to end the part one. I will continue to talk about alt season and bring you lots of data correct, uh, connected to the alt season. Uh, but I'm going to do it in the part two, which is the next presentation. So thank you for watching and uh, hopefully see you at the next.